We're getting a look at and a listen to a brand new pipe organ this morning. Allison was at First Lutheran Church when installation started a few months ago, and she's here with a follow-up. Good morning, Allison. Hey, good morning. That's right. It sounds like Sunday morning, doesn't it? Yeah. It's Monday. <laughs> we're up here in the balcony at First Lutheran Church in Manitowoc. And as you said, we were here back in June. It was all empty up here. And it's taken this long to get these more than 2,000 pipes and all the different parts assembled. And then they have to go through and tune and voice the whole thing. Just an amazing process. Jonathan Oblander is the uh, wonderful musician who you're hearing right here. Good morning. Good morning. Wanted to get your big finish in there. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we've been talking all morning since I've been here, just all the different intricacies of the, the pipe organ. Is there a basic explanation you can give us as far as how this works? Well, the basic explanation of it is what we actually have here is the organ console, and the organ console consists of four keyboards, actually, three for the hands and one for the feet. Hmm. And each one of these keyboards controls a set of stops, which we see both on the right and the left, and all these different stops are various sounds of the organ. We have principles, we have flutes, we also have reeds, we have string sounds. So it's whatever the music, uh, what, it, what it needs and the type of colors that it needs. So you actually are the tonal director for the Brookhouse Organ Company, and you've been here for weeks and weeks tuning and voicing. What, what is that process like? Well, the process of voicing is that we are basically taking the pipes themselves, of which there are over 2,000 in this organ, and we adjust each pipe for color and for volume, um, and also for speech within the room. Mm -hmm. So uh, we set up a remote keyboard downstairs uh, in, in the middle of the room so that we can hear the organ, how it pertains to the entire environment of the room. And then you play different notes, and how so, does that work? So for example, we'll play a note, and I might tell the voicer who is in the chamber to say that this pipe is too loud, this pipe is too soft. And so then he would take this pipe, of which we have a we have an example we over here. We have an here. example right here. And he would actually use these tools to change the sound of the yes. pipe? Yes. Okay. So he would take uh, one of those and he might, uh, for example, take this, this tool right here. kind of looks like a dental tool and we are doing sort of like dentistry with the pipes because hmm. we are dealing with the mouth. He might close it down or do different things like that. He might take this little tiny, what we call a nicking tool, and he would put little nicks in hmm. to adjust noise. Then he would also blow into the pipe and listen for what we call a burble. And then he'd put the pipe back, and he would huh. say, how's that? And then <laughs> I would be at the keyboard, and I would listen to the pipe, and I'd say, okay, or maybe it's not so wow. good so far, and we move on. So we have to do that for each and every pipe. Wow. See? Mm. Long, long process. And you yeah. go through that multiple times. So when you, uh, you know, are in the church next and you hear the organ, Imagine how much work went into that. So we're going to talk to some of the organists about how excited they are and listen to some more musical, beautiful music. Come wow. up a little bit later. You definitely have a greater appreciation for it now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks, Allison. <laughs> sure.